no man who has taken time to holistically give himself to the word of God has not proved it that it works. The word of God cannot fail because this is the absoluteness of his power. An open invitation to a life in the word. Because you have received the faith of Christ and you have embraced the righteousness of God through faith. Grace and peace are multiplied. That is why we lay hands on the lame and they walk. We lay hands on the blind and they see. We lay hands on the deaf and they hear. It's powerful enough to give you the answer on its first application. Arise on the wings of revelation. Align your destiny. Transform your world. This is Fenero Make Manifest with Apostle Grace Lubega. This is the man behind that song. We go ba mu kwano ogumpa de sase wo ningari ne chichamu kumutwe Yesu kwa galira tala oh Hebien si yonambi ragi Tebi kusinga yesu Abantu Bakwa gala lero Enchane bakuchawa Na yate kwe Umuano Tegugwa kulocha Yes, you are. Yes, Sing the second verse.
telling not I will praise Him He's exalted forever Exalted and God We will praise His name
it.
Jesus. Jesus. What a beautiful name.
Lord. Oh Jesus, Your name is glorious. Oh Jesus, 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 You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. You silence fear. disease Jesus Jesus you make the darkness tremble yeah. listen Jesus Jesus make the darkness tremble Jesus Jesus you sigh
and talk to God. Oh, shalalala de go saranana. Rosha bala de go zigala bala takosi malando. Zeko shalalalalalalalalalalala. What gift of grace is Jesus my redeemer? Help me quiet. There is no more.
of you who are visiting for the first time, I am so glad to have you today. Come on, wave and I, and I see your, your, your face. If you're visiting Fanero for the first time, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, I hope you've greeted your immediate neighbors with an elbow. Tell them you're doing good. Jesus is with you and he loves you. Hallelujah. Uh, let me pray for our offerings. My mic is interesting, I don't know. Father, we thank you for the most generous people in the world. Say amen. amen. And the richest they are. Amen. And the greatest we've ever seen. Amen. Establish and work through them more and more each day. In Jesus' name, I've prayed and believed. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Those of you who are standing in the back, kindly get some seats and get yourself seated so we can, we can, we can go on right now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I have, in so many ways and for so many years, 
and in so many sermons emphasized the power of expectation. You have had me preach about it. You've had me illustrate it. You've had me give examples about it. But the Holy Spirit began to speak to me again in that area, something that I found so profound for you today. And I realized that not many people are able to understand this, even though their minds know it, but to conceive it in their spirit and embrace its reality and carry its experience in their day-to-day -day life as you live the life of victory. It, 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 it takes a certain place of somebody deliberately infusing it in your spirit. You see, the Bible is very clear. There are many people who assume, presume to know the power of God. But in some sense, they deny it. Not deliberately, in most cases, but indifferently, because who doesn't want to see the power of God in their lives? We do. But the Bible says even though the form of godliness is there, the power of God is denied, even though they claim to have power, even though we claim from Scripture that we have victory. It's a hard thing to conceive it. That, and in fact, every time I think of Scriptures like Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph and maketh manifest the servant of his knowledge by us in every place. I shudder to think the reality of that experience. It is, if it is fully seen or manifesting in the life of a child of God. Oh yeah, yeah. We speak that especially from the point where we're under attack. You're going through some trouble and you're using it as a weapon, which is okay to use that portion of scripture as a weapon. But I have thought of a generation that is going to have the experience of the full revelation of that word, that particular portion of scripture. Thanks be to God, who always causes us to triumph. Always, that word always is powerful. It means nothing standing before you don't you have an answer for. It means that there's nothing that is attacking you, nothing disturbing you, nothing perturbing you, nothing frustrating you has not been dealt with already. And have you not been given the vision of its end? It's a beautiful thought to see. Imagine if we understood that portion of scripture. You would never walk in fear again. Nothing will ever intimidate you. Somebody shout amen. Hmm. But today, I want to speak to you about expecting the unexpected. The unexpected. Because I've, 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 I've preached about the power of expectation. But I want to indulge you a bit deeper in expecting the unexpected. In expecting from the least expected things. Because it's almost as though Every time we emphasize expectation, some of us are able to grasp it from the place where we are able to expect. In matters, we've drawn the power of expectation so clearly, but sometimes our eyes are dimmed and we become so blind from the places where we expect nothing because of the nature of those things, because of the nature of those people, because of the nature of those circumstances, because of the nature of those experiences were cut short in fulfilling the work of God in our lives. And I'll explain a bit deeper. When you read a portion of scripture like Romans 9, chapter 17th verse, the Bible tells us that the scriptures say unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee. 
and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. Sorry, I laughed. It's, it's interesting. Something came to me. You look at a man like Pharaoh. Some of you have heard of a story or read the story of how he refuses to let go of the children of Israel when Moses goes to him and Moses tells him, let my people go, God said, that they might worship me. And then deliberately, adamantly, Pharaoh says, no, I'm not going to let them go. I refuse. He becomes stubborn. The Bible tells us that God hardened his heart. When you study Hebrew, like I said, there's a difference between a causative and a permissive clause. Because there are no uh, permissive clauses, usually they use the language of causative. It doesn't mean that God is the one who went into the heart of Pharaoh to harden it. No, it means God let it harden. Okay? But also I need to emphasize something on that portion of scripture right there. When the Bible says, for this same purpose have I raised thee up, some theologians translate that portion to imply that God created Pharaoh to be hard-hearted. But I believe that there's a difference between for this reason have I, or this purpose, have I created thee, or have I formed thee in your mother's womb, from have I raised thee? Bible scholars, are you following me? So when you go deeply in, 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 to study the language there, you realize uh, from the Greek, the word they're used for raising thee is for this reason, it could be translated as for this reason, have I let your heart start? Have I left your heart to be starred? Are you following what I'm saying? Have I let your heart to be starred against the children of Israel that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth? That God raises or allows a stirring of Pharaoh because he wants to display his power to the world. Who ever expected that God would work through such a fellow? Do you understand what I'm saying? Who ever expected that God would work through such a fellow? Who ever expected that the persecutions that the children of Israel were undergoing, there was a bigger plan of God for Israel? The Bible tells us in Exodus 1.12, that the more they were afflicted, the more they multiplied and grew. Whoever knew that in the affliction that the children of Israel were weeping over, loathing in pain every night, God was working a mighty wonder of increasing them and multiplying them. And then I started to learn an interesting way of God that there are certain frustrations, certain challenges that he will allow to grow you, to multiply you. And because we, don't, we know not the way of God, neither do we hear from him as we ought. Many of us are so quick to judging matters. This is the devil. This is the devil. And, and as, as controversial as I might sound, with no fear, I'll tell you that some of you pray for the afflictions you need. You pray against the very things that you need because you do not know or understand. See, the Bible says when Paul had a thorn in the flesh, the Bible tells us that Paul, after praying, and he saw no answer. He went to God to inquire. He didn't just continue casting out. <laughs> you see? In much as we can debate on that specific portion of scripture, because one time I was with somebody in this congregation. We met a man, and he was sick. And this guy told him, oh, Apostle Grace can pray for you. He says, no, no, don't pray. This is my thorn. This is my son, he said. He refused prayer because he said he's copying Paul. He believes that this is the way God wants it to be. 
You see, the problem with interpreting scripture without the full understanding of God's way or heart, many of us lose out so dearly. To help some of you who might not know the reality of this, Paul said, and to keep me from getting puffed up because of the abundance of the revelations that was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger Satan to buffet me. Now the Greek word there, uh, flesh is sarx, S-A-R-X. Now sarx does not necessarily, could be, but does not necessarily mean sickness. It can mean emotional trouble, frustration. Just being disturbed, that's a thought in the flesh. Sucks, you see? But even deeper than that, God wanted to keep him humble because of the abundance of the revelations that came to him. So I tell the normal, usual fellow who reads this portion of scripture that it is an error, and I've said it once or twice, for some people who don't even know or have revelation to claim that they are under his own, this fellow speaking had abundant revelation. But I can speak to a man who has been given so much, who has come to the maturity of conscience in the sheer appreciation of what God has placed in their spirits and reveal to him or her the responsibility that they have towards the world. Remember when the Bible says that to whom much is given, much is required. And unfortunately, when we're talking about that, usually we only speak from the requirement of God by us to give to all the counsel in full because we don't want to be accountable of any man's blood and that's one dimension of looking at it. But there's a second dimension as well of looking at it. And that's the world where we must exercise control and power over ourselves in the abundance of things that God has bestowed on our lives. If I was talking to ministers, I would have wanted to extend that for an hour to help us understand that if we carry no wisdom in the liberties wherewith we have been graced by God, sometimes the wisdom of God would require certain things to come and fence us with some sort of control so God will effectively work through us. That's not a man dealing with a demon spirit. That's not in the realm of rebuking. That's in the realm of taming yourself. I cannot judge Paul because he was given so much. The Bible says as a wise master builder, it was given to me to lay the foundation of the gospel. And no man can ever, ever build any foundation except that which has been built of Jesus. And I always tell people, we can never build, I mean, we can never build foundations deeper than what Paul has built. We can only build on what Paul has built by Christ. Now, I feel sorry for the man who judged Paul in that place for a lack of faith. Ah, Paul has no faith. How can he have this? You see what I'm saying? Eh? <laughs> are you following what I'm saying? I know there are people who are listening to me, but they don't know what I'm saying. But, but they're okay. Let's go. Let's go where you're going. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But I tell people, but in there, Paul gave us the wisdom. That if the abundance of revelation was puffing, then he had to find the wisdom to tempt him to the humility to be able to hold the abundance of revelation that God had given him without inflating his ego, without pride or getting puffed up. If he had attained that, then there would be no need of a flesh, uh, sorry, a messenger to buffet his flesh. See? So, because we are beyond the foundation of Paul, our generation is beyond the foundation of Paul, we cannot use that portion of scripture to allow the devil to frustrate us. Or if he should, then it only means 
that we also need to reconcile certain things in our relationship in regards to how much we've been given by Christ, who has understood it. If you haven't, you have understood in Jesus' name. Now I have to believe God. That's not where I wanted to go. I wanted to go deeper into the place of the things that sometimes are going to happen in your life. And you're going to go to God and pray. And he might give you a very controversial answer, a contrary one, and say, I will not kill him. I will not take it away. I don't approve that divorce in spite. It might not marry, it happen next week. He might never change. <laughs> but I, I, I require you to be in this place. Because I see something way bigger ahead of you. And this should find you this way. It's not about him. It's not about them. It's not about her. It's about you. I am dealing with you. So much as you might want this away, I might not take it away the way you want me to take it away. And know that I've not taken it away. But you see, in having this trouble, you prayed once, twice, and carried not the wisdom to come and inquire of me. Learn to ask God certain questions when you pray a certain way and not see certain results. Ask God questions. If you are keen with a true heart, he will answer you. You see, because I discovered many years ago that the secret of getting answers from God is the state of your heart. The state of your heart. The state of your heart matters. One time, as in, uh, what was I? I think as in South Carolina or something like that. So in a dream of a night, I have a vision about one of our church members. And in that vision, the Lord shows me she was going to die in two years of a sickness. He even told me the sickness. So I call this church member and I tell them that the Lord has told me that there is a death coming and I saw you die in two years. However, it can be reversed. And I gave her instructions that I prefer not to express openly here. And we prayed. But after some time, I noticed that she did not take the instructions that I gave her. She hadn't her heart. And then one day, she opened her spirit to a voice that assumed it was of God. And ignored the first instruction from God. And then some random person comes in the name of a prophetess and tells her, the Lord has told me that you have been healed of ABC disease. Go off your drugs, says the Lord. And she broke every instruction I gave her <laughs> because the Lord had said, quote and unquote, and then she goes off the drugs, her body goes under, it grows a cancer, the cancer kills her in two years. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I realize that many of us, the difference between life and death, we never reconsider that it is what you hear. That is why I tell Christians, you better be sure you had God. You can miss anything, but not the voice of God. And sometimes we had in our hearts from the voice of God 
not directly as of I don't want to hear from God, but as of ignoring and overlooking some of the principles that underlie the voice of God and how he speaks to us. And if I can open the scripture, I could show you bit by bit how everything told this woman was contrary to even what the word would say on probably two or three levels. Her heart was hardened. Are you following what I'm saying? There are other things in there in that conversation that I don't want to share because they're too painful. But let me tell you something. God ministers to you according to your heart. That is why if there is a discipline that you should learn, learn to break before God. But the Bible says that a broken and contrite spirit, he shall by no means ignore what is a broken and contrite spirit. What is a broken and contrite spirit? What is a humble heart? Because many of us are proud more than we know. As a man of God, there's nothing that sometimes breaks me like, I want to instruct someone, I see they're going to something, and the Spirit tells you, but they won't listen. Don't waste your time. All you can do is pray that their heart is softened, one day to be able to receive divine instruction. And you cannot speak to them. You want to, but it's not in the ways of God for you to minister to them that way because their heart is hardened. So you learn to, to humble yourself and be able to hear God. He might come rebuking, he might come correcting, he might come exhorting, he might come uh, strengthening, upholding, he might come inspiring, whichever way he comes, if it is God, hear him. The Bible says that you will live. Say amen. So because we can't hear God, we assume what we see on the surface of truth and then say, no, but your word says, you see, turn these stones into bread. Satan tells Jesus, turn these stones into bread. Do a miracle. That was surface. If you are a son of God, he says, no, 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 no. There's something deeper in there. Man shall not leave by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. In other words, man shall not live by just that which is simply said from Scripture, but in consonance and reconciliation with everything to the full concerning Logos, who has understood it. Everything I'm saying in Scripture has to be connected to another. Nothing is disconnected and you should never build revelation that disconnects from the fuller picture. That is why it's important for you to first understand the big picture concerning divine revelation. Then come back and start knitting or weaving the pieces together as the Lord allows you step by step. That experience is wonderful. You must go to the end and understand. And from understanding, when you come back, everything Whatever peace shall come in your journey, it shall always reconcile with a bigger lot. Shall always reconcile with a bigger part. Shall always reconcile with a bigger part. Then the fullness will come. And then you'll start to see a journey of understanding God in such a unique way because you see things from the finished work. You see things from the end of things and come back to knit the pieces together. Are you understanding? Because sometimes the peace is not enough when a man has no full vision of the end of things. It's eternal life to know the one true God and his only son, Jesus Christ. So we, we have a challenge that we don't really take time to ask of God. Inquire of him. Why am I missing this? What is happening here? I've prayed about this job for a few weeks. Why isn't, why isn't it changing? I've prayed about my marriage for these years. Why aren't things changing? I've prayed about my relationship for these months. Why aren't, I, why isn't, why aren't things changing? I've prayed about poverty for years. I've done this. I've tithed. I've done all these kinds of things. What am I missing, Lord? If you do that, but without a haughty heart, you see, the Lord hates the haughty in spirit. He hates pride. Some people carry it. It even shows on them. And the Bible says the Lord detests those things. So, 
when you take time to ask, he is amazing enough to tell you whatever you're missing. So it's in such places of seeking God that there are things that you might be praying for in one direction and God will tell you, no, pray, pray change the course of this prayer because I want this to be like this for this purpose. Are you following what I'm saying? Did you know, for example, that God can use your enemy to bless you? Let's have a conversation on that. People, enemies. And sometimes there is wisdom in not praying for their death. Because if they die, they will not fulfill the full plan of God to bless you when the time comes. Come on, elbow somebody. Do you understand what I'm saying? I read a portion of scripture once in Proverbs 16 verses 7 that says, when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to be at peace with him. Now, that portion of scripture does not say to make peace with him. To be at peace with him. That doesn't mean that your enemy is going to reconcile and become your friend. Could be. But they can still stay your enemy and still be at peace with you. Who understands what I'm saying? So some of you think that that portion of scripture only means that he will cause your enemies to reconcile with you. Yes. But most deeply, no. No. He's saying they don't need to be your friends, but they will still be at peace with you. What you need to do is to simply walk in the ways pleasing to him. Understand what it means to please God, especially for New Testament believers. Because in the New Testament, there's only one instruction of pleasing God. Faith. Faith. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's big because that defines your moral foundation. It defines your, your, your intellectual foundations. It defines your working, your dealings, your transactions. Everything is around the realm of faith. Whatever is not done in faith is what? Sin. Are we following? But in the New Testament, the pleasing of God is entirely on what he has done for us through Christ and us embracing it. Never forget it. Forget anything, but not that. Because if you understand that, you're ever going to walk pleasing to God. <laughs> Very people look at the sacrifice and work of Christ. They look so much in their works and preach so much of the law and put these 27 or 270 steps for somebody to be approved of God. That's, that's, that's an Old Testament teaching. So then why did Jesus come? Are you following what I'm saying? The Father has loved you as he has loved Christ. And the sacrifice of Jesus at the cross at Calvary, the carrying of your sins, he bore your sins at the cross. A lot is done in there that pleases the Father. And he ever liveth to make intercession for you. Every time God wants to do something to you, he looks at Christ. And he is the ultimate perfect sacrifice. The Bible calls him the propitiation of our sins. The perfect one to me as a sacrifice. So every time God looks at Christ, he is pleased with you. Every time you disconnect from that faith, and try to do things to please the Father, now you are disconnected from the truth. And because you're disconnected from the truth, you'll have war <laughs> with those who are supposed to have peace with you. Who has understood what I just said? But when you understand what God has done by Jesus Christ, and understand primarily that the Father is pleased with me by what Christ has done, and hold on to that, that faith starts to come with works. It starts to circumcise your heart and arrest your flesh to agree with who you are in Christ. 
and whatever failings and weaknesses, they start to disappear as you hold on to faith. Somebody shout hallelujah. And that's a mystery many people don't understand. Every time we preach that, they think that we're promoting sin. We're not promoting sin. No, we're simply saying we cannot do it without Jesus. And every time we look into Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, these things start to align themselves. That's why Paul says, when I was among you, I sought to know nothing, to be acquainted of nothing, save him crucified and raised from the dead. Because he knows that's the only answer that can keep a man afloat when they're in trouble. Have you understood? Let me go deeper here. When you study that Greek word, to be at peace with you, in the many definitions, it also has a definition there called to prosper you. So it would also read that when a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh even his enemies to prosper him. And they don't need to be at peace with you to prosper you. They don't need to agree with you to prosper you. They don't even need to work with you to prosper you. God can use their evil for good. Oh, God can even arrest the circumstance that will cause them to do you good because it's the only way they will earn the bigger good for themselves. Oh, elbow somebody again. So there are some enemies, some of you when you're praying, first ask God, why? Why is this person standing against me? He might not even use that specific enemy, but he might use the weapons of your enemy. To translate good and righteousness over your life. One person one day came to me and said, I was told about what you do to the students in the university. I was told you're teaching them to do evil. I was told you tell them to sleep around. I was told you tell them to see the grace is available. Then I came slowly. And I believe there's someone who has come to check. Aha. Uh -huh. You're here because of my enemy. So the guy listened and listened and listened. After a while, he could not stop listening. Thursday, pa. Next Thursday, pa. Third Thursday, pa. Fourth pa Thursday, convert. <laughs> Anniversary, street preacher. <laughs> Come on, slap somebody and tell him it's working. So some of you, if it was not for those who hated us, you would not have found salvation. So thank God for my enemies. <laughs> Are you following child of God? Some of you, the, another one I think one time phoned me up and said, I, somebody told me you're very controversial. And, and they said, and I love very controversial people. So I came to check out what's controversial about this fellow. Ah, I'm a converted person now. They don't miss Fanero, they are here. Do you know somebody can labor you what somebody has been looking for? Hey, I'm saying somebody can labor you and think that they are trying to destroy you. Yet that's exactly what somebody has been waiting to hear to join you. Hallelujah. That's a man who created peace with me because they reconciled a member to church. Am I preaching to somebody? God can work through the worst person you know in the world. So some, some might come as distractions. Some might come as bad words, but it's okay. There's some people I go to and I pray and God says, no, leave this one. They need to be alive. They need to be alive. I can't kill them. It's not fun when they're in heaven regretting. No, it's fun when they're on the earth. And they say that that woman will never continue. And every year they start to see God making you stronger and greater. And I'm talking to you who had words like you will never make it. You'll never get married. You'll never have children. You'll never prosper. You'll never progress. You won't make it until 2022. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Look at you. Somebody shout 
God, amen. amen. Some of those people, God doesn't want to kill them. Ah, he wants to keep them alive. He wants to feed them. He wants them healthy. They're not healthy because they're prayer men. No, they're healthy because God must preserve them until that day when they'll switch on the television. And you're on and they say, hate that woman and they switch on another. And you're on and they say, hate that guy and they switch on another. And they go on radio and you're on and they switch on their YouTube and you're their suggestion. They <laughs> hallelujah glory to God hallelujah glory to God God can use people who hate you expect from the unexpected sometimes thank God for your enemies and say father I know that you've kept that woman for my good I know that you have kept that brother for my good. I know that you have kept that man of God for my good. Because a time is going to come when things will turn. And eventually I want them alive because I want sorry here, not in heaven. Eh, 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 eh. Who knew that the hatred on Joseph was taking him to Egypt? knew that what they were throwing in a pit being sold to the Midianites that they were setting a man on the course of destiny to become second in command after the king who knew that the posterity of Israel was preserved through the hatred of men who thought that by throwing a man in that hole that was his end mama 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 tell your neighbor I survived a lot to be here did you understand what I just said? Scientists say that when a woman sleeps with a man, more about 500 sperms run out to go to find an egg. And you're the one who made it. <laughs> Glory to God. Elbow somebody and tell him I've beaten a lot to be here. You already defeated 500 million people. So what is that guy? That Come on, come on, come on, come on. What is one man? What, what are two men? What are three people? What are five people? Come on! You fought out of millions. Even before you had an intellect. Even before you had a tongue. Even before you could pray. Even before you could fast. Even before you could sow. You were a fighter. Somebody shout, I'm a warrior. What about one sperm like this? Glory to God. Glory to God. <laughs> he can prosper you through the least expected people. That is why some of you should not pray against your enemies. Jesus told us, bless them. Why? Because you're preserving them to advantage you one day. Either individually or through their action to destroy you. It shall redound to the glory of God on your life. And you must believe it. Nobody hates me is not working for me. Those are my employees. <laughs> They are so good that they don't they don't work on a pay someone can waste their saliva and air and write and type things here and their hands even pain they work when the bible says all things work together for your good they became your employees there yeah. so when the bible says all things work together for good your enemies are in those things I said your enemies are in those things working together for your good. Somebody once wrote an article and we bought more chairs because the more they are afflicted the more you afflict, the more chairs we buy. 
That is why you should worry if you don't have an enemy. Because that means you're frustrating the spirit of prosperity on your life. How can you be there and you're reconciled with everyone in the world? You have a problem. You're political. You don't have an experience with God. Oh, God send more enemies for your glory. Totitia. Some of us, there are places we would have not been known but because some people had a problem with us. They introduced us before kings. And, and the kings came looking for us, not because of what they said against us, but because the kings could judge. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> That's called grace. That's called grace. Two, God can bless you from the least expected places. In Micah, the fifth chapter, the second verse, he says, But thou, Bethlehem, a prater, thou, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me, that is to be the ruler in Israel, whose goings forth have been from old and from everlasting. That's why many people never thought that the Savior would come from Jerusalem. That is why I tell people, don't look, don't regret being in a third world country. Some of us can never look for greener pastures. Because the greenest pastures. Ah, thank you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't have a problem if you went to Canada for purpose or for Australia for purpose. But if you just went for a job, if you just went because you are looking for a better job, some people in America fulfilling the American, uh, American dream. And some of us are in Uganda fulfilling the kingdom dream. <laughs> so, uh, come on. I have no problem where you go. But don't go to fulfill the dream of that country. Go to fulfill the dream of that, the kingdom of God. Find purpose there. Somebody shout Hallelujah. That is why I tell you, it's not where you go. It's not where you come from. I remember in my university days when I was from senior six, going to university, my career university refused me to give me the course I needed. Somebody say, thank God. Yes. So I went to Uganda Christian University and they told me, no, we shall give you the course. First year, some guy takes me to the mountain, Bessania, and I encounter God. <laughs> it's there where God tells me, you, you, I, 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 it, it was ordained for me to meet you here, not in Makere. Do you understand what I'm saying? And oh yes, I perform very well as a man, the best, I'm a smart kid. You understand what I'm saying? Here is working. But the God who didn't allow me to get a certain mark to get into my career, not because I was dumb, but because he was knitting up something to start in a Christian university. He is God. So some of you, even in your failures, God is working something that you have no clue. <laughs> Maybe your first degree, your, your first class degree was going to disturb heaven. <laughs> what you needed he would have given it to you if it didn't come be okay if you know you did your best God can fit anywhere and he can align even the places you never had you least expected to work and then you start to imagine you know there was somebody 
Some of you, that's why you were denied visas. God saw some days ahead and says, ah, this one will die in Australia. Others say, hey, which devil is disturbing? There is no devil! He wants you here for a purpose. Expect from the unexpected. You don't need to be in the first world to become a millionaire in dollars. Because there are men on this land who have made a million dollars. And there are men in America who are begging on the streets. The race is neither to the swift. No, the battle to the strong. Don't worry about up there. Listen to what God is doing. Somebody shout hallelujah. Shout glory to God. Lastly, even in the unexpected times, in 1 Kings 17 verses 1, the Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord liveth, of Israel. He told him, there shall be no dew, no rain these years, but according to my word. And the word of the Lord came. And immediately there was no, came to pass. So the word of Elijah came to pass as he had prophesied it. And there was no rain, no dew for many years. And the Bible tells us, <laughs> God tells Elijah in verses 3, Get thee hence and turn thee eastward and hide thyself to the, by the brook of Cherith. This is before Jordan. And it shall be that thou shalt drink of the brook and I have commanded ravens to feed thee there. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord for he went and dwelt by the brook Cherith which is before Jordan and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and flesh in the evening and he drank of the brook. God started to feed a man in the times where there was no food. Expect the un expected expect from the unexpected and so i'm here to tell you even when they're working against you he can bless you are you following me even when you the place you are in is controversially working against you he can still bless you even when the times or seasons, the circumstances that you're in are not working in the favor of man, God can still provide a way to work for you. And the Lord told me to tell a man and a woman listening to me this evening that you are, some of you listening to me, I don't know who is able to get it, but for whoever is able to get it, listen to what the Lord is saying. You are entering a season of receiving blessing from the least expected people, in the least expected places, in the least expected times. That is why some of you, after your wedding, you disconnect from some people. Because the person you thought was going to be there for you, they disappeared. And the person you least expected was the one who was with you that whole day. That is exactly how God works. Don't hate them. Just forgive them and understand. But that's just the way of God. I saw a vision of people hating you, creating peace for you. I saw a vision of the places that had rejected you, reconciling themselves to you. You see, many of you know that we have entered a recession and it's probably going to take about three years of financial strain across the world, including Uganda. But I saw a people who are going to build wealth in this season more than they have ever built wealth before. Come on, slap someone and tell them they're talking about me. So if somebody asks you, how are you? From now to December. Say expecting from the least expected. Don't say I am fine. No. If they say, how are you? You say expect from the least expected. That should be your answer for the end of the year. Glory to God. How is your family? Expecting from the least expected. How is your business? Expecting from the least expected. How is your marriage? Expecting from the least expected. How is the ministry? How is your job? <laughs> Glory to God. One time I was somewhere in Boyogere 
I entered the church and I prophesied on a woman. She had suffered with trouble, poverty, many years. Many years of poverty. She was tired of poverty. So I entered a church. I was not even preaching. I was just attending. And the, word gives me, the Lord gives me a word of knowledge to this woman. I walk to her. I tell her, woman, the Lord has told me you have been prophesied for many years and you have not seen things come to pass. And he heard you say, I'm tired of prophecies that have not been fulfilled. And she started crying immediately. When she broke down crying, I told her, that saith the Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Your days of poverty are over. So she said, another prophecy? I said, no, a fulfillment of prophecies. I had never seen anything like that in my entire life of ministry. I just began ministering. A man got a dream in the U.S. and God gave him two names and a place in Uganda. He came from the United States looking for two names and a place called Bueyo Gerere. He was not even pronouncing it right. He looked and looked and looked and looked. He claimed the Lord had showed him a vision of a woman. When he finds her, he will know. So he went church to church to church to church. He goes to that church where he ministered and then asks, do you know a woman so called so and so? And the woman was presented. I said, the Lord has sent me to give you a certain amount of money. When the woman came to me for testimony, she told me, Apostle Grace, I used to sleep hungry, but now I look at bread and there is no appetite. I look at rice and meat and there is no appetite. Not because I'm not hungry, but I'm eternally grateful to the God who could give a man my name thousands of miles away to come and fulfill his promise. I said expect from the least expected. People are going to walk to you and say, I saw you in my dream. I saw you in my visions. I dreamt about you. I was praying and your name came in my... May, 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 people, may your number go on a man's phone. May your email fall in a man's spirit. May your Facebook page be found by the person that is looking... Somebody shout amen. amen. Shout glory to God. Expect from the least expected. Now, now, now I know. Oh, I was expecting for my uncle. My uncle, you know, he promised me money. He was in Canada and he told me he's going to send me transport. No, no, listen. What if he dies? That's the end of your destiny. Nada. What if he refuses? What if he hears something funny about you and then says, this time I'm not going to help you because I heard that you're saying... <laughs> Glory to God. I'm talking of the God that can make certain people. I remember one time there was a certain car I wanted. It was a four wheeler. Just began ministry. An error had begun. A woman who doesn't come to this church doesn't come to this church. One day I'm at the office. This woman comes and sits there. I need to see you. I need to see you. So she comes in. Hello, Apostle. I don't fellowship here. I've never met you. But the Lord spoke to me to do something. Can we go out? So she takes me out of the office. She gives me keys. Tells me, your God told me, oh, oh, I have spoken. I have rich spiritual children. I have rich spiritual children. Who could even buy that car a hundred times more? They are here. <laughs> but they didn't. Come on, elbow somebody and tell them they are talking about me. Do you understand what I'm saying? A woman that I don't pastor, a woman that does not sit under my cloud, a woman that I've never instructed, got a dream in the night and came and packed a car there wah, and says, your God told me that you need this car. I told her, kneel down. 
If you can tell you about me, kneel down and I pray for you. I'm a man of God. I said, Father, man to Godzilla, but he can son the coast apparently. Then she went in blessing. <laughs> Expect from the unexpected. I remember one Thursday here, I told people, some of you are going to receive cars this week. You remember that Thursday? <laughs> one church member left her seat, walked to the end, and somebody gave her a key. There. Eh, eh, eh. I'm talking about instant miracle. I'm not talking about next week. Don't forward this to next year. Ay, 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 I feel the anointing. Somebody receive it. Don't take it to next week. I just finished speaking in the meeting. Somebody was seated there. They walked to the end. When they reached the end, somebody got keys and said, have. Human said, what? I was in this service and the Lord told me to give you this car. Eh? Eh? That was her first car. So when I'm talking about expect from least expected, I'm not talking about you went back home and then somebody dreamt it. No. Some of you even on this ground as I'm speaking, something is going to land on your phone. Something is going to land on your email. Something is going to land on your Facebook. Some, somebody is going to meet you before you sleep tonight. Before this week ends, before this year ends, I prophesy it and it cannot be otherwise. Are you tired? Should we go home? <laughs> Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? That's the anointing we are working under, that's the glory you're working under. Hallelujah, praise God. Hallelujah, praise God. I told you a story once. One time I'm carried in a certain place. In a vision of the night, I'm carried in a certain place. And I see people building factories in an area. And then I'm seeing these Indians building factories, huge factories in an area in Uganda, somewhere. And so I look through and I said, Father, what are they doing? Say they're developing your nation. And then I see this open ground opposite them. And I say, what's that ground for? Curious. The Lord told me, what do you think it's for? Wisdom came in my spirit. He told me, I, I said, I think they need a place to live or a hotel or I don't know, apartments or whatever. I said, you got it right. So I said, wow. I said, who's going to do that? The Lord was like, it came in my head. He told me, just thank. I said, Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It is mine. Two weeks. Somebody seeks an appointment with me. Unexpected individual. Pastor Grace, the Lord appeared to me a few days ago and told me that there's a certain property I must give you. I said, hey, Where? La, 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 la. I said, let's go. My goodness, I reached there. So when I reached there, the land was all empty. It was nothing. But when I reached there, I, it's the exact property I'd seen in my vision. So I asked her, what about that, those hilly places? And she said, I had some Indians bought. Oh, did you get it? She said, I had some Indians bought that place. Some people bought it. Do you know what that means? Do you know what that means? <laughs> I was in the perfect will <laughs> of a future plan. Some of you, I pray for the anointing to be thrown into the future of things. So you can be relevant in that time. I'm testifying to help somebody. I'm not testifying to boast. Please don't take it as boastful. I'm trying to open somebody's well. I'm trying to open a wound here, spiritual, for somebody to get a hold of what God is going to do for you. Expect the unexpected. Expect from the least expected. 
Your enemies are going to bless you. The places that rejected you are going to respond to you. The seasons that are frustrating you are going to position you for the greatest good heaven has ever sent on the earth. Now lift your hand and talk to God like you know what you want. Come on, open your mouth and let's pray. You are great. 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 Everything written about you. Demons tremble at your presence. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything written about you is great. Come on, let's pray. Presence. What a mighty God we serve. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Everything written about you is great. Come on, let's go. You are great. voice the power of expecting from the least expected has taken root right now in the name of Jesus oh my god somebody receive it I feel something heavy power of the Holy Ghost 
Shanda Bade Gazuga Talapa. May those who are to advantage you locate you, <laughs> whether they hate you or not. May the places that have rejected you start to reconcile with you. May the very places from where you carry the most shame build the big, biggest and deepest glory on your life. May God redeem the times you have lost. May God redraw the seasons that left you. Bible says he's able to restore the years that were eaten. May whatever has been eaten by the cankerworm, the caterpillar, to be restored in such a dramatic way that your story will go on the news. Your story will become a headline. Your story will be talked about in your community, in your family. May God give you a testimony that the media must hear. May God give you a testimony that televisions must be switched on for. That news reporters must be paid for. And it is for God. There are people on this ground. CNN is speaking. BBC is speaking. The biggest newspapers in the world are going to write very soon about this Ugandan, this Kenyan, this Uruguayan, this man who was not even, who lost his family at a young age, that girl who was never raised by her father, that they never even had a parent, they, but they made it anyway. People are dreaming for you now, as I'm speaking. Some people's hearts, I see a man on a table, he has counseled a certain person. And his heart has told him, look for another. And that other is you. I see somebody right now on this ground. God is telling your enemy to bless you right now. He's causing them to repentance. I see somebody who received a false report and you, you, you have a case at police. You're in courts over something you did not do. But out of this, God is going to build something way bigger. Now I want you to clap your hands to Jesus. Come on! Celebrate God, celebrate God, celebrate God, celebrate God. Celebrate God! Oh! I'm excited for you. I'm excited of what I'm going to hear already. Glory to God. Now let me do one more thing. Don't walk away because it's raining. This is the most important thing. Because even on rainy days, people get born again. So I want every man on the ground to be standing where you are in Jesus' name. If you're here and you've never given your life to Jesus, let me give you the opportunity to come right now and receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Now those of you who are in the congregation, start doing your job. Start doing your job. You're the great Jehovah, my great I am. Come and receive Jesus. From the rising of the sun. Ask them, ask them, are you born again? And preach to them now. Take five seconds only, they will allow. Don't worry, they will agree. If they are shy, you come with them and lead them here. You're the great Jehovah, my great eye. From the rising, if they need to be escorted, escort them. To the setting up. Run quickly. Come on. Hurry. 
Harry, Harry, Harry. Harry, Harry. You're the great Jehovah, my dread. I dread in my. Those of you who are here, hurry, hurry, hurry. The sun is coming up. Repeat this out after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you because you died for my sins and you were raised for my glory. Today, I receive you as my Lord and Savior. I'm born again. Amen. Put up your hands and I pray for you. Father, Bless these ones. Deliver them from whatever they've been struggling with. Every spirit of struggle and strife. Get out in the name of Jesus. Every spirit of destruction and death. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Witchcraft, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Infirmity and disease, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Help that woman with a child. You're free in Jesus' name. You're free. Now, those of you who have made that prayer, you're going to run there for only two minutes. We want to meet you, greet you, help you understand what it means to be born again. Pastors, I need about four or five pastors to go and greet them, have a little talk with them for about five minutes as they go. And then I'll see you on Sunday at 11. We have two services, 9 to 11, and then one from 11 to 1 p.m. Hallelujah. The rest of you, See you on Sunday. Keep shining. This broadcast was brought to you by Fenero Ministries International. For more information about the great work of God, visit us on the web at www.fenero.org or download the Fenero app today and enjoy sermons, daily devotionals, and timely updates. The Fenero app, available on both Google Play and Apple App Store. You may also email us at info at Follow us on social media platforms on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Panero, make manners.